Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. So you bought an RF Explorer handheld spectrum analyzer and notice the pre-calibration text that appears on the screen every time you turn it on. It makes you a bit nervous, eh? I mean, after all, it's supposed to be calibrated. Actually, this does not mean that the device is not calibrated. What it means is that it is in the process of applying calibration factors to yield a calibrated instrument. Nonetheless, the fact is, the frequency readout of your RF Explorer, as purchased, still may not be as accurate as you might like to have. So here's a case in point. I recently received a brand new RF Explorer as a gift. Now I see the card that was included with the instrument, which tells me that it is calibrated. And yet I notice that when I put a known to be accurate 910 megahertz signal into it, it indicated 910.051 megahertz. My goodness, its frequency reading was off by 51 kilohertz. Wow, this seems like an awful lot. Okay, so 51 kilohertz out of 910 megahertz is off by what? 0.0056%. Okay, so I'm picky. I knew there was a method to calibrate the frequency measurement of the RF Explorer. I had done this once before with my first one, but how is it done again? I don't remember. So I searched for the instructions on the internet and found them pretty wanting. Nonetheless, I followed the instructions that I did find to the letter and they didn't work. My RF Explorer just wouldn't complete the process. It turns out that there was a step left out of the process that makes the difference between success and failure. I am going to give you the complete process here in this video. Follow along with me and you will have success. Now, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. I make a concerted effort to respond to every comment. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So. Let's go calibrate an RF Explorer. In order to calibrate the RF Explorer, there are certain things that we need to do. To begin with, we have to download and install the latest firmware and computer software. Well, my thought is, well, I just got this thing. Shouldn't it come with the latest version of firmware already? Well, not really. Think about it. They manufacture the item, they stock the item, some of them maybe go out to some distributors, and while they sit in stock, the firmware changes for one reason or another. The process of pulling all of the stock and updating the firmware is both difficult and expensive. Thus, they leave it up to the new owner to do the job. This is why they include this card with the RF Explorer. It says, the latest user manual software and firmware downloads are available at, and then they give the URL. So go get the latest firmware and software. Go to the link address that I've shown on the screen here, get the latest and greatest, download and install the most up-to-date RF Explorer software for your computer. At the date of this video, the Windows version is 2.6.2110.1. And then update your RF Explorer with the most up-to-date firmware. I have the RF Explorer Plus, which has the firmware version 3.29 at the time of this recording. And the RF Explorer Standard has 1.33. Now, you're also going to need some equipment. At a minimum, you will need to have a known to be accurate frequency-wise signal generator, which is capable of producing 
910 megahertz. Now, you could try to use other frequencies to calibrate your RF Explorer, but 910 megahertz is the default and probably will give you the best calibration of the instrument. I actually tried using 100 megahertz and I was really underwhelmed with the results. The amplitude needs to be from minus 20 to minus 50 dBm. Now the amplitude obviously is not very critical. They give you a wide range to shoot for, but the frequency on the other hand is very critical to have this right. Remember, you're calibrating the frequency accuracy of the device after all. Me, I used my Rigol Spectrum Analyzer to verify both level and frequency of my signal generator. Now that we have all of our stuff together and prepared, let's do the calibration. Now that we have all of our stuff together, we need to set the signal generator output to the required specifications. Here you can see my signal generator is set to 910 megahertz and minus 30 dBm, which is right in the middle somewhere between the minus 20 and minus 50 dBm. Now at a very minimum, just connect this signal generator output to the RF Explorer's input. Me, I piggyback the input of my Rigol Spectrum Analyzer so I could see the signal on something other than the RF Explorer. My complete calibration setup looks something like this. Now, connect the RF Explorer to your computer via the USB cable provided. Wait for the computer to recognize the presence of the RF Explorer. Next, open the RF Explorer application on the computer. Wait for the application to connect to your RF Explorer. Now we have to make some adjustments using the application before we can successfully calibrate the device. The default is 512 sweep points. This interferes with the calibration process so we have to change this to a lower value. Click on the device, find the defined sweep points, find standard 112 points, click on that. Now we have to verify that the calibration signal is within the bounds of what we need. Go to the Spectrum Analyzer tab, Find the Spectrum Analyzer Frequency and Power Control section. Change the center. Double click on this. Change it to 910 megahertz. Change the span to 1 megahertz. And then click on the Send button. And at this point, you should be able to see your calibration signal on the screen. Now, you can make the span smaller at this point and still be able to see your calibration signal. So I'm going to change mine to 0.112 megahertz, which is the lowest span that you can get. This gives us one kilohertz per sample. And you can see my RF Explorer is reporting the 910 megahertz signal as a 910.051 megahertz signal. Now we are ready to calibrate. Find the configuration tab up at the top of the screen. Click on the configuration tab. Notice there is a section here called Frequency Calibration. Now, if you're using something other than a 910 megahertz calibration frequency, this reference in megahertz, you need to change that value to whatever value you're using. But like I said, 
The 910 megahertz, as you can see, is the default, and it probably will give you the best possible calibration. When you're ready, you click on the Calibrate button. Now we have this dialog box, connect or power on the RF source of 910 megahertz, minus 20 to minus 50 dBm. Click to continue only when ready. Now we've already verified that we have a, a valid signal, so we're just going to click on OK, and then sit back and watch the show. It's gotten through step three of five, and now we're being told to disconnect or power off the RF source. All right, so in my case, I'm going to disconnect the RF Explorer from my setup, and I'm going to connect a shorting connector to the input to make sure that absolutely nothing is being heard. Once you've disconnected or power off your RF source, or in my case, disconnected and installed a shorting jig on the input of the RF Explorer, I'm just going to click on OK, and it does step four and five of the calibration procedure. Now everything disappears as you see, and you return to the Spectrum Analyzer tab. You should have a flat line at the bottom. I'm going to reconnect my RF Explorer to the signal source. And now we can see 909.999. That's a lot closer than 51 kilohertz away. The calibration is complete. So the actual process of calibrating the RF Explorer is pretty much totally automated and easy once you have everything set up. Now you can have real confidence that it will report the actual frequency of the signal being observed within reasonable limits. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.